Welcome to Titus's Fan Calls and Blower Calls webinar. My name is David Pick and I'll be presenting today's program. Besides going through an explanation of water systems and what is a fan coil, this training session provides a general systems overview on how the fan coil functions as part of the total water system. We will also review the various fan coils available in the market, including typical applications and a discussion of their control and valve packages. This system is based on the distribution of hot or cold water to individual heat transfer devices, known as fan coils, located in each room of the building. When cooling is required, the chilled water is circulated through the device, while hot water is circulated through the system when heating is required. Why use water? Water has 3,200 times the heat capacity of air. This is due to the higher density of water versus air, allowing a much higher heat capacity. Higher heat capacity allows for more efficient transfer of energy. The water either releases its energy through the water coil to the air during heating mode, or absorbs heat from the occupied space when in cooling. A one inch pipe can transfer the same amount of energy as an 18 by 18 air duct. The one inch pipe will require less space and less material to install leading to lower costs. Part of designing the HVAC system for any project is the equipment and installation cost. These cost requirements ultimately guide the design and construction of the project. The major components of an all-water system are the chiller, boiler, pumps, fan coil units, and of course the piping to tie it all together. The chiller will typically run at 45 degrees F, while the boiler used to operate at 180 degrees. Today, with condensing boilers, we see temperatures as low as 120 degrees F. Typically, a fan coil would provide, be provided with 4 GPM of cold water and 2 for hot water. However, this can vary wildly due to unit size, heating and cooling loads, and the occupied space. In all water systems, the space fan coil will be sized to condition the space, ventilation, and infiltration loads. Consideration needs to be given to selection and operation to maintain both sensible and latent capacity of the fan coil. We will touch on control of the fan and chilled water valve later in the presentation. In a system with a dedicated outdoor air unit, the ventilation air is treated in a centralized location. The latent moisture from the outside air is removed. The conditioned air for ventilation and pressurization is distributed to the space. Positive pressurization from a balanced outside air and exhaust system help to minimize infiltration and associated localized loads from it. The sensible and latent loads from the space are conditioned by the room fan coil. With the removal of the ventilation and infiltration loads from the occupied space, the room fan coils and piping can be reduced in size. Fan coils provide sensible and latent cooling as well as heating to a room or a zone. The term fan coil will mean different things to users, specifiers, and installers in different countries and regions, particularly in relationship to product size and output capacity. Most of the time it is referred to as the fan coil when it uses water to provide the heat transfer, but it can also be referred to as a small terminal unit. A two-pipe system is used for either cooling only or heating only applications, but cannot be used for simultaneous cooling and heating. A two-pipe system consists of two insulated pipes, one for supply water to the conditioned space and the other for return water. As the supply water flows through the fan coil, required heat transfer between the water and the conditioned space takes place. A flow control valve controls the flow rate of hot or cold water to the fan coil. The flow control valve 
is controlled by a zone thermostat. Depending on the season, either of cold water or hot water can be isolated with simple changeover. Because building operators tend to change over from cooling to heating once a season, problems can occur during the mid-season where cooling may be required part of the time and heating the other part of the time. Two pipe systems without water changeover circulate chilled water only, and when heat is needed, it is provided by electric strip heat at the terminal units. In some cases, hot water is circulated during the coldest part of the heating season to reduce operating costs. Note that the water flow rate required for heating is much lower than chilled water flow. The piping and pumps are sized for the maximum flow of chilled water. Using the same piping system for both results in very low velocities during heating. To overcome this, 50% of the pumps may be needed to be in operation in heating mode. The advantages of a two-pipe system is that it has half the piping of a four-pipe system and therefore a lower installed cost. Some of the disadvantages are that the unit can only heat or cool, but not both. If part of the building needs heating while the other part needs cooling, this can be a problem for a two-pipe system. Fundamentally, the function of chilled water system is to transport the cooling fluid from the chillers to the low terminals or fan coils and back to the chillers. For the sake of simplicity, each coil is representing a fan coil. In this system, the constant flow pumps are delivering chilled water to each of the two pipe fan coils. The fan coils are called two pipes because you have just two pipes going to them, one for supply water and another one for return water that goes back to the chiller. A constant volume system would require three-way type control valves to allow the water flow through the coal or bypassing the water to provide a constant water flow through the system. In a two-pipe fan coal system, where the same fan coal is used for cooling or for heating by changing the system to heating and back to cooling, is called a changeover system. Typically, the change to the heating occurs sometimes in the fall and will vary by the region. For the spring and fall period where you may find the need to do both cooling and heating based on the zone or based on the time of day, supplemental electric heat is a good compromise. In a constant volume water flow system, when the water flow through the coal there is a certain amount of resistance or pressure drop that the pump must circumvent. However, when the valves allow the water to bypass the coil, the resistance will be less, causing the system to become unbalanced. Therefore, a balancing valve is installed in the bypass to maintain a constant pressure drop as the water flow is modulated around the coil. This type of constant flow system with a three-way control valve is very simple from a control and layout perspective but the pumps will continuously run at full power even during part load conditions. Because of this, many jurisdictions no longer allow this type of system due to energy concerns. If you try to use the two-way control valve with constant flow, you will have system problems. Once the zone temperatures are satisfied on some or most of the zones, the two-way control valves will close to stop the cold water or hot water from flowing through the fan coils. However, the pumps will continue trying to push the constant water to all the terminal units. Any fan coil units with open valves will receive the extra flow. The entire system pressure changes and the system will become unbalanced. This is not recommended unless you have a system with less than 10% diversity on the loads. Two-way valves are used in a variable flow system. As each two-way valve adjusts the flow of the chilled water through the coil to satisfy the existing load, the secondary or distribution pumps respond by regulating the amount of chilled water delivered. Water flows through the bypass in either direction as needed in order to balance the system. You may have heard this system called a decoupled system.
Three pipe systems have separate chilled and hot water supplies with a common return. These systems are rarely used because they consume more energy because of the excessive mixing of the chilled and hot water and the common return. You might run across some of these systems in renovations, but they are not allowed under current energy codes for new designs. A four pipe system consists of two supply pipes, one for cold water and one for hot water, and two return water pipes. The system is further categorized as an independent load or a common load system. The independent load systems have two separate water cools, one served by hot water and the other by cold water. The system makes use of two-way on-off valves. Common load systems can have a single coil in the fan coil, but still be supplied independently with four pipe systems. These systems make use of three-way diverting valves. Four pipe systems advantages and disadvantages. All year availability of heating and cooling with individual zone temperature control. Chilled and hot water can be simultaneously supplied during the spring and fall seasons. Simpler changeover decisions, when to turn on the boiler, when to leave on the chilled water. More flexible and adaptable to widely varying loads. Disadvantages. Four pipe systems have a high first cost in addition to the need for either two coils or more costly control valves at each terminal unit. The systems also have a higher operating cost because of the two pump operation. They do, however, provide good flexibility in meeting varying loads. Four pipe system includes a distribution system that contains both hot water supply and return lines as well as a chilled water supply and return lines. A four pipe fan coil technically could be heating one minute or cooling the next. The control valve and the thermostat set point will be deciding when to cool and when to heat. The clear advantages of a four pipe system is each zone or fan coil can be heating or cooling as required independently of the requirements of the neighboring zones or units. We notice here that we're showing two-way valves on all the units. You also must be considered that it has a secondary pumping system to make it work. Fan coil components. The basic components that make up a fan coil unit are fin tube coil one, which is the heat exchanger, the motor blower section two and four, and the filter three. Fan coils can have one coil with multiple rows which can be used for just heating or both heating and cooling. Heating only fan coils also called cabinet unit heaters and if properly designed the coils will have widely spaced fins so a filter is not critical or needed. Fan coils used for heating and cooling may have one or two coils. Fan coils with two coils are set up to allow one of the coils be used for cooling only, and the second one strictly for heating. Units with one coil will require alternating cold or hot water depending on the time of the year. Some manufacturers provide coals with a single fin block, but dedicated cooling and heating tubes inside that block, while others provide separate coils. The single fin block will provide more heat transfer surface area in heating or cooling modes but will not allow for simultaneous heating and cooling. This would be a concern if the system had an active dehumidification cycle where the cooling coil and the heating coil were both energized at the same time. Keep in mind, for this to work, the heating coil must be after the cooling coil and thus cannot provide freeze protection. These units should not receive untreated outside air if freeze up is a concern. The motor blower helps increase the heat transfer by forcing convection across the coil and to force conditioned air, 9, into the room space. The room temperature is controlled either by a unit mount or wall mounted remote thermostat which may include a manual on off switch and speed control, 6, which will allow the speed of the fan motor to be reduced or increased as needed. The water flow through the coil can also be reduced or increased by monitoring the control valves, 10. Many designers 
will choose a fan coil unit to meet the load requirements while running at medium speed. Any fan coil equipped with a cooling coil should have a drain pan installed below the coil to capture the condensation. Depending on the type of fan coil you may have, the main drain pan extended out to capture the pipe condensation within the valve piping package, or it could be separate auxiliary drain pan. A well-designed fan coil unit will have low water pressure through the coil as well as an efficient fan and motor assembly for quiet operation and low energy consumption. The blower motor assembly in a fan coil is comprised of a double width, double inlet, house centrifugal fan. The smallest fan coils will have a single blower. As the size increases, the units will proceed to two blowers per motor. Some larger units will have two motors with two blowers each for a total of four fans. Motors with two blowers will have a single shaft that goes through the motor with the blowers installed on both sides to balance the shaft. The common base motor offered for a fan coil is a three-speed PSC. The fan coil can be connected to a three-speed controlled thermostat or just have a single speed connected in a simple on-off mode. ECM motors are also offered. There are two distinct types of ECM offerings. A fully variable output motor like what is seen in terminal units. These motors are used to provide constant airflow in systems with varying pressure drop. The other ECM option is to provide an ECM motor with distinct program taps. These taps can be programmed to provide different torque outputs. They can emulate a three-speed PSC motor but at a higher efficiency. Fan coils generally provide airflows up to 2,000 CFMs at a static pressure of up to a half inch water gauge in most applications. Due to the limited static available in fan coils, they are generally applied in single room, single zone applications. Blower coils utilize higher horsepower motors which can provide up to 4,000 CFM at statics as high as 1.5 inches water gauge. They utilize belt drive in place of the direct drive for vibration isolation of the larger motors. Blower coils are provided with the double inlet, single blower, and single speed fan control. Some manufacturers can provide direct drive motor blower combinations for blower coils, but airflows are limited in these offerings. Blower coils with higher available static pressures can be applied to larger systems, multiple rooms with ductwork, and applications with higher filter MERV ratings and the coincident pressure drop. Now let's look at a standard PSC cur fan curve. As the system pressure goes up, airflow decreases, but we can also see that the fan energy draw also goes down. Now, if we compare it to an ECM program to provide constant airflow, we see as the pressure drop goes up, the fan increases its power, shifting curves to maintain airflow, but so does the energy draw. For reasons of energy conservation, it is suggested to provide ECM program for constant torque. If we look at a comparison between a three-speed ECM versus a three-speed PSC, there are a couple of items worth noting. The energy usage at the same design conditions for the ECM are lower. We can see this in the CFM to watt comparison on the far right. The ECM also has a greater range allowing for lower turndown and increased energy savings. Here's another example at a higher external static pressure. The greater turndown range allows fan coils with ECMs to better match loads, allowing for longer run times at decreased energy draws. We will see how that helps us with humidity control in a few slides. If we look at the coils in a fan coil, we'll find that the industry standard provides both 3 8 and half inch outside diameter tubes. Fins come in aluminum and copper when corrosion resistance is a concern, and casings are provided as galvanized steel or stainless steel. 
if we look at the cooling process and the coil itself, the cooling and dehumidification capacities of the coil are dependent on the physical attributes of that coil. Factors affecting coil capacity. As the coil depth, the number of rows increases, latent capacity and leaving water temperature of that coil will go up. However, so will water pressure drop. Coil circuiting. As you increase the number of circuits on a coil, your water pressure drop will go, on, go down, but also your leaving water temperature, your delta T, will decrease, as well as your latent capacity. Fin density. If you increase your fin density, you're going to increase your surface area. That will help your leaving air temperature and your capacities to go down, but will also drive up your air pressure drop on your system and can decrease for the same energy the amount of airflow you get out of the unit. Coil face area. As you increase the area, the capacity will go up, but so will your cost as well as the space required. If we look at the design conditions of the unit, as the entering water temperature goes down, the capacity will go up, but you will pay for it in higher chiller energy usage. Entering air temperature, as it goes up, your capacity will increase, but the capacity delivered to the room will not increase at the same rate. Airflow. As you increase your airflow, your capacity again will go up, but generally your latent capacity will go down. And water flow. As you increase your water flow, your capacity will go up, but it's a game of diminishing returns. It will only go up so much. ASHRAE psychrometrics. At least a passing knowledge of psychrometrics comes in handy while selecting coils. If we look at plotting a point on a psychrometric chart, you'll generally need at least two data points to plot that point. Most common will be dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature relative to humidity. If we look at the processes on a psychrometric chart, there are a few that we will see in a standard fan coil. We'll see E, dehumidification. We'll see G, sensible cooling. But we're going to see them in F, the cooling and dehumidification cycle. If we look at the temperature as it crosses a coil, we can see here that the difference in dry bulb temperature across the coil defines the sensible capacity of the coil and the difference in dew point temperature across the coal defines the latent capacity of the coal. Please note that they do not have a linear relationship. If we look at this cooling process plot, we can understand why. We see that the sensible capacity on a psychrometric chart is defined as the energy that's used to move from left to right across the chart. If you look at the top of the cooling process, you'll see that for a certain period of time we're doing only sensible cooling. To where the latent is actually the elevation change on the chart where you go up or down. We see that we do not start to decrease our latent load until we almost reach saturation. At that point the cooling process actually follows the saturation line down. You'll see a small dip as it comes back up at the very bottom the hot pink line is actually showing you the cooling process in the space. That small dip accounts for air bypass. When air goes through a coil, not all of the air comes in contact with coil surface. Some of it is bypassed. As that air is bypassed, it mixes with the supply air that does come in contact with the coil, and therefore you get a mixed condition after you leave the coil. Handing of fan coils. One thing that is peculiar in the HVAC industry is how to define the handing of a fan coil or how you go about determining the location of the piping connection. With most manufacturers, the cooling coil piping connection defines if the unit is right or left handed. As the person looks to the return of the unit in this graphic, the cooling coil being represented in blue, the piping connections are to the right. Therefore, the fan coil is considered a right-hand unit. 
At this time, I would also like to point out that the heating coil in red is shown to be located in the front of the cooling coil or in the reheat location. The heating coil on a fan coil can be installed in the preheat or the reheat position. In cold climates, the heating coil tends to be located in the preheat position to reduce the possibility of freezing when the fresh air is required. Condensate pans. Galvanized steel insulated pans is industry standard. Stainless steel plastic pans and mastic coatings are also used when corrosion protection is a concern. Pan extensions help encapsulate valve packages. Safety drain pans reside below the units in case of overflow, and safety overflow switches shut off chilled water when leaks are detected. An IAQ pan is a double deflection pan that eliminates any chance for standing water. If we look at the standard horizontal low profile fan coils, we'll see that they follow a standard construction type. You'll have concealed units which are coils, duct collars, drain pans, and fans meant to go into architectural enclosures. Concealed units, which will have a return housing over the fan. These allow the units to be ducted above a ceiling. Finally, you'll have exposed cabinets, which are meant to be installed inside the zone. And some manufacturers offer recessed telescoping units. These units are meant to be installed in an architectural enclosure where the bottom panel is screwed in place as an access door. We can see a typical installation of a low profile fan coil unit in the bulkhead above the door. You might have seen these before in hotels or dorm rooms. We also see horizontal high performance units. Fan coils are generally low profile units. Fan coil face area sets the capacity of most units. When you go to a high capacity unit, most manufacturers go up to 18 inches tall to provide more face area and higher capacity. We'll see that the units available are concealed, so would fit into a standard architectural return concealed with plenum for ducting, and finally exposed. This exposed unit is in galvanized only because they generally will go in an industrial area or a mail room. Vertical floor mounted units also come in the same configurations with concealed units being installed inside architectural features at the perimeter, a flat top or an angled top cabinet being installed underneath the window. The idea behind an angle top is to keep anybody from installing books or putting something else on top of the discharge and blocking the airflow. And finally, a low profile concealed unit in areas for retrofit where you have low sill heights. Vertical high rise applications have become common. We'd like to go deeper into the vertical high rise fan coil unit used in water systems as it is most commonly used for fan coil units for large high-rise projects. Projects like these can easily have served hundreds and in some cases several thousand units. The unit is set against one or two walls and covered in sheetrock to match the room, paint, or wallpaper scheme. Only the supply grill and return grill and thermostat are exposed to the occupant space. The vertical stack units come as a standalone unit with its own external riser piping or in pairs sharing piping. The most efficient and cost effective installation is when two units are paired together so they share a common set of riser pipes. The two units function independently of each other and therefore can supply heating cooling to two different zones. In the case of apartments, these zones can be either one apartment or the zones can actually be in two separate apartments with two separate tenants. On the left we can see a side view cut away of a vertical stack unit. Air is drawn in through the front return grill shown in cooled when in the cooling mode of course through the white water coil drawn up 
through the blower and supplied out from the top grill of the unit. An important item to note on the side is the riser pipe shown mounted on the back of the unit. As mentioned earlier, all the fan coil units must be connected to the building's boiler and chillers through the building plumbing. An advantage of vertical stack units is that it comes with its own water pipes to connect through the building to the boilers and chillers. Installation costs at the project site can be lowered by using this type of unit as the fan coil unit comes pre-piped with the necessary project piping. In riser piping layouts with the water system is typically supply return from either the roof or the basement. In this schematic we show a basement serviced riser piping column for a single stack of units and for a master drone stack of units. Most units use two-way valves with final unit utilizing three-way valves. In order to ensure that all units receive the proper number of gallons per minute, water GPM flow regulator valves should be utilized at each unit. This will prevent units near the basement and pumps from receiving too much water and the top floor units not receiving enough water. Here are three typical installations for vertical stack units. As mentioned previously, the master drone installation is the most cost effective due to the use of one riser set supplying two fan coil units. Between A, B, and C, B is the most cost effective as two riser sets can service four units. In C, two riser sets can service only two units. Vertical high rise fan coils. To summarize the vertical stack fan coil unit advantages, they have a small footprint. They can have multiple supply grills for multiple rooms. Standalone or master drone configurations for multiple rooms or tenants. And they are supplied with their own risers. Valves and controls. Valve packages control and regulate the flow of water through the unit. Shown here is a complete two-way valve package used by any water system heating and or cooling unit. Starting with the slot pipe on bottom, there is a shutoff valve so water can be isolated from the unit for maintenance or repair. Shutoff valves are almost always required. Next, moving towards the coil is a union for easy disassembly of the unit from the building risers. Next is a Pete's plug for measuring water, pressure, and temperature. A Y strainer is shown next for removing particulates from the water stream. The motorized control valve is next, which is controlled by a thermostat to allow water to flow or not flow through the coil. Finally, there is another union before the coil. The return line has similar valves, minus the Y strainer and the control valve. It does contain the flow control valve that limits the total GPM allowed through the unit. This prevents one fan coil unit from drawing too much water and starving other units in the HVAC system. Three-way valve control. Now let's focus on the way a fan coil controls the comfort in a room and also let's cover the different types of control valves that you will find with fan coils and blower coils. When the room load is satisfied or the zone temperature becomes comfortable, one of the ways to control the room temperature is to stop the water from flowing into the coil. In a three-way valve, the water flow will stop going to the coil and will be redirected to the bypass line and back to the chiller. The most cost-effective valves are the two-position valves, which are also called on-off valve types. Typically, they are spring return to allow the valves to return to the normal position when power is removed. On a normally closed valve, when the electric power is applied, it will fully open. When the power is removed or de-energized, the loaded spring actuator will make the valve return to the closed position. On a normally open valve, when the power is applied, it will close. The spring return, which is part of the actuator, should have enough strength to overcome the working and system water pressure. Depending on the manufacturer, the capability of the actuators will vary. The simplest way and most basic control system would be a thermostat that is directly connected to the fan and valve actuator. When the thermostat detects that the room temperature is within a degree from the set point on the thermostat, it will cut off power 
to the normally closed valve. This valve will not open until the thermostat detects the room temperature is a degree or so above the set point. Using on-off valves and simple thermostats, the room temperature will tend to isolate below and above the set point and could become a bit uncomfortable, and this is one of the reasons modulating valves are used. Modulating valves are capable of varying the water flow in a small increments from fully closed to 100% flow. There are two types of modulating control valves. The three-wire floating actuator, as the name implies, has three wires. One is for neutral, one is used to power the valve towards the open position, and the other one to power the valve towards the closed position. The amount of time you leave the power on determines how much the valve moves to the closed or open position. If the valve takes eight seconds to go fully closed to fully open, and the stermatat is calling open 50%, it will power the valve for four seconds. If the valve was closed, the 0 to 10 volt DC proportional valve will be either fully closed for NC values at 0 volts and fully open at 10 volts. With proportional actuator, you can determine fairly accurately the position of the valve. At 2.5 volts, the NC valve will be 25% open. Two position valve actuators can be powered with 24 volts or line voltage. Line voltage actuators could be 115, 208, 230, or 277 volt. Modulating valves always require 24 volts. It is important to mention that the thermostat or their controls have to be designed the same way. In my years reviewing project specifications, I've noticed that a percentage of them are not specified. As a tip to the engineer who specifies fan coil valve packages, the type of modulating valve should be written to avoid confusion. Two-way valve control. A two-way modulating valve is similar to a three-way valve in that the water flow through the coil is modulating proportionally to the load. As mentioned in previous slides, the primary difference is that a two-way valve does not bypass any unused water. It simply throttles the amount of water passing through the coil. The coil and the air being conditioned experience no difference in the cooling effect of using a two-way versus a three-way valve. The chilled water system, however, sees a great difference. Recall that the three-way valve, the terminal water flow, water through the coil plus the water bypassing the coil, is constant at all loads. With a two-way valve, the terminal water flow varies proportionally with the load. Because there is no mixing of coil and bypassed water, the temperature of the water leaving the load terminal remains relatively constant at all conditions. In fact, this return water temperature may actually rise slightly as the load decreases due to coal heat transfer characteristics. One more item to cover. In one of my previous slides, I mentioned that two pipe fan coals where the same fan coal is used for cooling and heating is called a changeover system. Generally, a thermostat controlling a fan coal with valves will require some type of sensor or aquastat to be strapped to the inlet piping of the fan coal to sense if the water in the system is heating or cooling mode. A basic thermostat uses the aquastat, which is a simple thermostat. If the inlet water temperature is above 83 degrees, the aquastat will connect the heating signal from the thermostat to the heat the space. When the temperature of the inlet water temperature drops below 65, the aquastat shall allow the cooling signal to be connected to the control valve to cool the space. A digital thermostat generally has a sensor, typically with 10,000 K resistance, which will change the resistance depending on the temperature on the pipe. Some items to consider when selecting a thermostat to control the fan coil unit. Fan cycling. Fan off when the room load set point is met. We usually see this in residential or condominium applications. Continuous fan. Fan on at all times. This is most common in commercial applications. Recommended on unit mounted controls, stagnant air at thermostat sensor provides inaccurate data, something to be concerned with when you're installing the thermostat. Noise level on off operation is more obvious than on constantly running fans. Although continuous fan speed ramping provides energy savings with the fan and the valve control to condition the space.
on-off thermostat operation. This slide shows the operation of a normally open and normally closed on-off valve. Depending on whether the valve is normally opened or normally closed, the thermostat will either remove or add power to operate the valve. On-off valves are either 0% open or 100% open. There is no middle ground. Going from full closed to full open is drastic and can cause large temperature swings around the thermostat set point for the room. Modulating thermostat operation. A more moderate and energy efficient approach is to use modulating thermostats with modulating control valves. A modulating valve can be at any point between 0 and 100% open depending on the load demand called by the thermostat. If the fan coil unit is turned on and the temperature in the room is far from the thermostat set point, the modulating valve will be at full 100% open. As the temperature of the room comes close to the set point, the thermostat will start to slowly close the valve unit the set point as the set point is reached. Once the set point is reached, the valve will be fully closed. If the temperature of the room starts to drift from the set point, the thermostat will open the valve only just enough to bring the room temperature back to the set point. This minimizes the use of hot and cold water through the fan coal and makes the boiler and chiller more energy efficient. Another type of thermostat control are building management systems. In large projects, installations where individual fan coil unit control is not required or where occupants should be prevented from adjusting the fan coil settings, a BMS system can be used. A set of computers in a control room remote from the fan coil unit controls the valve position and the fan speed to maintain the set point in each space. This system is used often in schools and office buildings. This type of system is rarely used in hotels and dormitories where individual occupant fan coil units are needed. Okay, let's talk about performance certifications. When designing a system, you always want to specify for all your units to be ETL listed and labeled. This is a safety requirement. What ETL does is it verifies that all the components inside that unit work well together and meet the electrical ratings of each other. 440 certified or HRI certified is a performance rating that tests and publish fan performance curves and HRI 410 certified coils will verify that the coils meet the capacity listed. Finally, let's talk about the advantages of the water system. Water is an effective heat transfer medium, therefore distributing pipes generally are of relatively small volumes compared to air ducts. Recirculation of air is unnecessary, so commingling of odors and contaminants or concerns over fire and smoke spreading from one zone to another are minimized. First cost is often less than for other central systems. You have less for building space is required, more suitable for retrofit applications, off-hour conditioning does not require central air system operation. Cooling can be easily shut off in unoccupied areas. Fan coils are generally quieter than unitary systems with compressors. Minimal space needed for air handling rooms and duct clearances. Individual zone and temperature control. Variable speed secondary pumps can be used to improve comfort control and reduced operating cost. They can use heat recovery techniques. They're flexible and readily adaptable to many building model requirements. Provide individual room control. Prevent cross-contamination of recirculated air from one room to another. Disadvantages of water systems. All air water systems are limited by its ability to control relative humidity, outdoor air content, air composition, and pressure. A separate ventilation system is required for quality installations. No positive ventilation is provided unless wall openings are used. Ventilation is usually from a wall aperture and is not easily controlled due to wind and stack effect. Otherwise, it is often accomplished by opening the window. Unless dehumidification and latent load is handled with a separate ventilation system, such as an air water system, a condensate drain pan system is required and terminal units or filters must be periodically cleaned. Relative humidity may be high in summer 
particularly in chilled water flow is modulated for temperature control, no humidification will be provided. Seasonal changeover is required. Maintenance and service work must be performed in occupied areas. The filter associated with terminal units are the low efficiency type and require frequent changes because of static pressure limitations.